Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a clap offering here this morning in the chapel. We will for Jesus on the campus of Promise Christian University. We welcome everybody here in chapel and those viewing by way of television. And we want to thank you uh, for praying for us this year. We, God's given us, we're going to talk about uh, the vision that God has given us as a ministry and to the body of Christ, which we believe the Lord is directing this message not only to our people, but to the world out there, the body of Christ throughout the nations. And we're really excited about what God is doing. We're just rejoicing in the fact that how he miraculously took care of us this year as a ministry, not only providing uh, for us uh, in the area of finance, but also uh, keeping us in divine health and strength and bringing miracles and healing to the people. And we're, we're just excited about that. But the real exciting thing is we're going to talk about the prospect of the future uh, of what God wants to do through the work of, through his ministry here on the earth is astounding. God always surprises us through the many years as Adele and I have been serving uh, in the ministry together for 50 years. And we just, we've seen God do miraculous things. But this past year, with all of the challenges of the lockdowns and the COVID and all the things that make things difficult in, in, for the, in the natural world, yet supernaturally, God overcame every one of those and by a miracle of God brought us through. So it's amazing uh, how God can work because he's sovereign. He's overall. He cannot fail. It's impossible for God to fail. So when we trust him, uh, as we have tried to do through the years, sometimes even like a child, we just want to obey the Lord because we know he's got a purpose and a plan for every one of our lives and for all of us here today. So why don't we go ahead and pray. And we love all of you. We want to thank you for your support throughout this past year uh, and it's just been great and God's always made a way where there seems to be no way. Father we thank you for World for Jesus and Promise Christian University and our pastor friends around the world. Lord we're thankful for each one of them that love, love you just like we do and we pray that you bless them this day and give them a, a wonderful new year of ministry and opportunity lord to to bring out the fourth the gospel of the lord jesus christ around this world and lord we're thankful today that you're the god of provision you make a way for us you open doors of opportunity for us and we're so thankful here today for your for your love and your mercy and your grace and all these wonderful things that you're doing we pray that you will anoint this message today that you will, Lord, uh, send a double portion of your, of your blessing so that the people that view and the people that are here may be touched by what is said, by the revelation and the vision you have given uh, this year for the ministry, not only our ministry, but for the entire body of Christ. And we're thanking you and we're praising you in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody said, Amen. 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 Earlier this year, you know, we try to get a theme uh, for uh, for the new year. Last year it was God will do amazing things. Mm -hmm. So I pray every year that the Lord would show me uh, what he wants our ministry to do and what is the goal that he has, what is the mission that he wants us to perform, and what is the thing he desires for us to do. And so the Lord gave me that uh, scripture. We're going to read it in a minute in Habakkuk. I will work the work in your day. So I believe that God's getting ready to do a great work in our day for the for the Lord and we're thankful you know uh, a couple years ago we were in Manila uh, uh, in a conference speaking there and Adele and I were at the airport ready to go with our dear friend brother Eddie Villanueva the head of the Jesus is Lord ministry there we were going to go with him to Hong Kong and Taiwan for further ministry because they have works going on there in those places we were, Adele and I were uh, sitting there ready, waiting for our brother to come. We we're all going to go on the plane and heading for the next next country so we could minister. Well, and then we got started getting text messages, and he did as well, uh, that this COVID is hitting. Don't come. It could be dangerous. Uh, better, better not come here So at this time. So we just turned around and came home. But I see the wisdom in that. Of course, I was a little disappointed. I was looking forward to it. But, you know, God has a timing for everything. And actually, he was protecting us. Uh, so we need to listen when God speaks. So he knows best. 
And of course, we know that in the future, those doors will still be open for us. And I'm grateful for that. We're just waiting for the right time, the right moment that we can go back again and minister, which we will. But if we had known a couple of years back what would have happened from that cancellation there in the, in the airport at Metro Manila, we wouldn't have believed it. We wouldn't have believed about the pandemic. At first, some people told me they thought it was a hoax. They didn't believe in it. They didn't believe it was real. But we found out it was definitely real. And it kind of put everything on hold for the entire world. Not just our schedule, was, but everybody's schedule was put on hold. And uh, so we wouldn't hardly believe the impact. And then, of course, we know that uh, the things that happen like a depression hit our nation and rebelliousness and lawlessness and doing all these things within our cities and, and our homes and towns, which we wouldn't, we'd never seen before. And people that are, are our age, an adult not my age, we, we've never seen this kind of rebellion happen before in our lifetime. I'm sure it has in history, in the past, but not in our lifetime. We were very shocked to see uh, how things were happening and how lawlessness, and we know it's the work of the enemy. We know that the devil is going forth to devour like a roaring lion. But we know that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So when we, when we uh, left that place to come back to Los Angeles, we were amazed to see many of the changes that you were uh, on that area. But, I, but one of the things is a word of comfort I want you to know that God is still on the throne. <laughs> He's still in charge. The enemy can only go as far as God allows him to go and then no further. We know that from experience, from what the Bible declares, and also from our personal experience on the platforms and fields of the world. Amen. We're thankful today that God is in control. He is sovereign. He's omnipotent. He's everywhere present. He's all-knowing. He's everything. So today, we're in a very good situation. Now, it may not look like it on the outside. We might be shocked and, and amazed at some of the things that are happening in the world today and in our nation today. But I tell you what, don't be too shocked because we know we're living in the end time hour, amen? Yeah. And we know that before Jesus returns, there's going to be rebelliousness. There's going to be anti-God things happening. There's going to be all these kind of situations and so we mustn't be too surprised or shocked, but we must be prepared spiritually to meet every challenge that comes down the line. Yes. That's why Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ in the three and a half years of his earthly ministry, when he trained the disciples, he was preparing them to meet on with all the challenges of the day and all the persecution and problems and circumstances. He was preparing them uh, by informing them that in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. In the final analysis, guess what? We win. Amen. Yeah. But we're not exempt. We're soldiers. We're like a soldier that has to go to battle. We have to show up. Yes, we have our commander, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's in control. He's in charge of the situation. But we still have to show up for the battle. But God is there to give us the victory when we call upon him. Well, today we're going to talk from the book of Habakkuk. He was a wonderful prophet in the land of Judah. But he was there to, during his uh, earthly ministry or his time as the prophet in the land. He saw a decline within the nation of Judah. He saw the king and compromising and the people who were supposed to be the people of God who had been directed out of Egyptian bondage brought through the wilderness journey of 40 years with God, how God provided for them water from a rock and, and the quail and the manna from heaven. And the Bible says that when they left Egypt, that there was a cloud of God's glory that led them in the daytime and became a fire of protection at night. They were covered day and night by the Lord. And yet, years later, they would, they would begin to forget the goodness of God. They would begin to forget their history, where God had brought them from to where they were that day. And the prophet saw that. It upset him because he understood the spiritual aspect. As we hear today in the body of Christ, we in ministry, we see the situation. We're not blind. We're not deaf and dumb. We understand the day and the hour that we're in. We know the challenges of the moment. We know how the enemy is fighting. But we also know how great God is. 
Through our experience, we know what His Word declares through history. We know what God can do today in our present situation. That Jesus Christ, as Hebrew 13 and 8 declares, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His salvation is just as real today. His healing power, His miracle working power, His delivering power is just as real today as it was 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the shores of Galilee. And that's where you and I come in today as leaders of the body of Christ. Yes, we know what's going on. Of course we do. Well, Pastor Mike, can we do something about it? Yes, we can. We can gather together. We begin to, begin to pray because we know the Word teaches us in Ephesians that we're in a spiritual warfare. We're in a battle that's not of this earth. Our battle is in, in the heavenly places, and, in, and that's where the battle is coming from. We're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this world. But we know that greater is He that's in us than here today. Yeah, we have the power of the Holy Spirit here today. Mm -hmm. And Jesus prepared those disciples, and then in, in the end, just before He left, preparing them and still instructing them on the last day what to do next. Go to Jerusalem and tarry there until you be endued with power from on high. With that power, he knew they could overcome every situation. With that power, they, he knew they would help to establish the church of Jesus Christ on this earth. And they would be able to meet the challenge. They would become mature in the things of the Spirit. They would take their place in the spiritual realms of leadership in the nation that they were in at that particular time. And you and I here today, just like Habakkuk, when he saw those situations that yet God still had his men and women in the land to minister. Amen? amen. How many will say amen to that today? Amen. He still has his men and women here today to minister and we're not going away. We're not going anywhere. We're not going to disappear. We're here proclaiming God's word and amen. we know the power and the authority that God has given to the body of Christ here today through the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, and that power will overcome every challenge that comes along the way. Amen. How many will say amen to that today? Amen. amen. The book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk ministered during the decline of the nation of Judah, a beautiful nation that had once served the Lord. And they started to decline. They started to backslide. They started to compromise their faith, began to forget their history, began to forget how God brought them through but each time, in the, as he said, I brought you out with the wings of an eagle. Can you imagine that? Mm. And then after time goes by, settling in, becoming complacent, ignoring conditions and circumstances, then things begin to happen. Mm. That's why we have to, like, like the prophet, we have to keep our eye on the situation. We have to be aware of what God is doing. What is God telling us today? What is our vision today? I will work a work in your day of which you will not believe, though it be told you. Yeah. This is what we need to stand upon today in our ministry. This is the word that we need to work from today, that God will work a work. When? In our day. How many say amen to that today? Yeah. In our day, God's going to begin to do a work. So the prophet began to see the decline of the nation of Judah. This nation once knew God. Prophets, including Habakkuk, repeatedly called the nation to repentance, but the nation stubbornly refused. This is a sad situation here today. I pray for our nation, the United States of America. We've traveled the nations of the world for the last 40 years, and I will say this unashamedly, that the United States of America is still the greatest nation on the face of the earth. Amen. The provision that God has made in this land the, the, the freedoms that we still have in spite of those who may want to have, have us live in a contrary uh, manner, but we still have the freedoms that we enjoy from our founding fathers, actually, and they were inspired by God himself. Thank they you, were inspired by the Holy Spirit. They, when they wrote that Constitution, it was a document that was a revelation from God of a nation that could serve the people and serve him in freedom, liberty, and justice for all. So today, we're not going to give that up, are we? Yeah. We're not going to allow the enemy to come in and tear us up and tear us apart like they did in Judah. The decline of a great nation, and just and he, he, it bothered the prophets so much 
in this in, in Habakkuk, and I read the commentaries, it's a dialogue between him and God. He had enough of it. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to know what God thought about the situation. Mm -hmm. And he even got a little upset. <laughs> he, he even asked the Lord, how come you don't do something about it? Well, guess what? God's getting ready to do something about it. <laughs> and when he does, look out. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, Habakkuk <laughs> chapter 1, verse 3 says, Why do you show me iniquity? Now, this is Habakkuk kind of asking the Lord why the Lord's allowing this stuff to go on. Well, we've all asked those questions, all of us. But, you know, God has an answer. You know that? He was kind enough to be patient with Habakkuk and calm him down and let because God has a plan. Amen. God has a purpose. God is not unaware of our circumstances today. He's not unaware of our situation, whether it's a nation or a people. God understands where we're at today and where we need to get at too, and where we need to be. Amen. And so in this dialogue, it's beautiful between the prophet and the Lord himself. You know, how many know we still have that access today? Yes. Yes. We still have that access to the Lord. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There's strife and con the contention arises. Therefore, the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, perverse judgment proceeds. We're living in times like this. Unprecedented disrespect for the law. Rioting, violence, calling evil good. Uh, and, and good evil. We're living that way. He, in this dialogue, the Lord is listening to him. His heart is sincere when he approached the Lord. You know, there's times when we've questioned God. I, I had some people that felt bad that they had a, they, uh, the well, pastor might have questioned God. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. No, it's all right. He understands. We're his children. We have questions. This is how we learn. This is how we grow and mature in the things of God. There's nothing wrong with questions. You know, and God doesn't, he's not going to be offended. He knows we're his children. We're on a learning curve here today. I've been on a learning curve for over 50 years and I'm still learning. I'm still finding things in the Bible I never saw before. I'm still maturing areas that maybe 20, 40 or 50 years ago I wasn't ready for. Maybe now we're getting finally getting ready. The, Lord, the Lord's been real patient with this guy right here. I can tell you that right now. So he got, he got upset. He said, well, the law is just powerless. We're seeing the wicked going for it. They're doing everything, all kinds of stuff. And we're living like this today, where, where the, there's lawlessness in the land. But in, in the midst of an evil generation, God still has his people. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about that because it, what we've seen in our travels, and I can tell you, because I even spoke in an underground church in Beijing, China, run by young ladies, the most courageous people that, I, that I've ever seen in my life. Because you know over there, if you, if you do, you might go to jail. That's the thing. And, and so different, they have different laws there, different type of country. So, but you know, God protected us when we went there. And so well, we saw those things in, in other lands and evil is, 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 but is, was around. But in spite of all that, God still has his people strategically placed in every nation on the face of the earth. There are God's people in the most far away, remote, desolate places that you can think of. <laughs> God has a people there that are coming. And we understand that one of our friends who is a pa pastor over there in the Philippines was asked to speak in a remote countryside type of place. And so he got his, parked his car where all the cars were parked because they, and, and, and they were ready for a service, ready for the pastor to come. And he had to walk an hour and a half to get to where the little place was. Can you imagine that? And when he got there, guess what? Practically everybody accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The whole place. Thank you, Lord. They were waiting for him. And they don't even know that much about the Bible. They, they, had, they didn't even know that much about the gospel. But they were waiting. So God sent his man in the most remote, remote place. And he walked an hour and a half to get there. Hour and a half back to get to the car. How many know that has to be God yes. today? For, so in spite of all the doom and the gloom predictions, the, my message last year was God is going to do amazing things for his people from Luke 5.26. His word is true. Now, let me tell you this. We made that 
message last year. That was our message last year. God will do amazing things for his people. Now this was in spite of all of the challenges. Why is that? Why could we make a statement like that or have a, why would God give us a title like that to preach on with all this stuff's going on? Because God has a plan just like he had for Habakkuk. Yes. He has a purpose. Even in the midst of our frustration and our, our questionings and wonderings and all the rest of it, God has a plan. And he knows that we're just human and we're just learning, but he wants to use us. He chose not to use the angels for this particular type of ministry. He chose human beings that are born again and filled with God's Spirit. Amen. So we're, he, we're being used by the Lord. So our job then is to find out, well, what's God saying to us then? Mm. What is our commander in chief? What orders is he giving to us today? So we can follow along with the direction of the Spirit as the glory cloud led them in, in, in the daytime and the, in the pillar of fire at night. Oh, we, we're covered here today in our wanderings and our journey. Even when we don't fully understand, even the prophet didn't fully understand. But the Bible said a little bit later, the just shall live by faith, not by sight. We're not going by the sight of the natural world. We're going by the insight of the spiritual world that God has given us here today to see what God is doing in our lifetime. That's why to me today is a message of encouragement, Amen. one of hope, one of peace, one of joy, one of breakthrough today in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. And so in spite of all this gloom and doom, we still had that message last year God is uh, doing, going to do amazing things. And this year, <laughs> this year, I will work and work in your day, which you will not believe, though it be told you. Amen. God is sovereign. He's in charge. Amen. And then, you know, uh, God, is, we experienced last year salvations in our little ministry, healings, the miraculous, and financial blessing. And incredible. When, when everything was locked down. Even We even had a wonderful graduation at Promise Christian University. We couldn't even have in-house classes. We had to, our, our students, and I commend them, go, had to go online. But you know what? God gave them the ability that they could do it. And we still had a wonderful graduation. One of the best we've ever had, in spite of every challenge and condition. You know, when you trust the Lord, like the prophet was learning, to trust the Lord and go by faith, God will not fail you. He will not. Amen. Situations look bad, conditions, all the rest of it. And you know, another thing, we've never closed our doors as a ministry. Amen. I thank the Lord for that. Amen. I know what God is expecting from us. And I tell you what, I think so far, I think we, he's pleased. We've done our very best. And I will say this, he sent a lot of wonderful people, though, to help us. Amen. We couldn't have done this alone. Adele and I know that. He sent people, he promised me, he promised me. He would send people to help us. And he's done that. He's done that over and over again. It's so obvious. And last, last August, Adele and I celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. And uh, as I was praying at my desk here at the university, God spoke to me. We we're talking about uh, divine provision. God wants to divinely pro provide for the ministry. And the Lord spoke to me. I was wondering about that. And he said, he said, the Lord said, I'm going to allow this. Now, I heard an inner voice, not an outward voice, but I heard an inner voice independent of my mind, a man speaking to me. And I know it's not me because he's answering questions and so forth. And it's not me talking to myself. And he said, I'm going to allow this. I'll just give you his words, not mine. I want to read it correctly here, what he said to me. I'm going to allow this to happen because of your faithfulness, sacrifice, and commitment to me all these years. So that's a wonderful thing. I Amen. thank God for that. Oh, that's yeah. going to have an effect. Amen. It's going to have an effect on this ministry in a marvelous way that we'll be able to do more things for the Lord, enlarge the capacity of the ministry. And also God wants to provide for the entire body of Christ, not just here us here in, in the city of Covina, but God wants to provide for the nations of the world, all those who love him. How do you say amen to that? Amen. All the ministers amen. that are ministering in the little churches and in, in the mountains where we've gone and some of those places in India, in Africa, Latin America, we've been all to all those places, Southeast Asia, uh, faithfully ministering as, and the Philippines are some of the most difficult of conditions. 
and yet faithful, like Habakkuk, even though he questioned, he was faithful. He stayed to it even when he didn't understand, because the Bible declares in, that God's ways are higher than our ways, Amen. and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We have to go by faith and trust the Lord that He knows what He's doing. Mm. We're just His servants. Our job is to follow His direction. Oh yes, I realize that we're the ambassadors of Christ. The Apostle Paul said we were. Mm. I realize that we are the spokesmen for God in this world today in the 21st century. I realize that we have been commissioned by heaven to give forth the gospel under the demonstration and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I understand that. But at the same time, we also understand that God is in full charge. He's in full control. And at the end of the day, I don't care how marvelously he uses our ministry, we're just his servants. That's all. Amen. Amen. All the glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All the Amen. praise Thank you. goes back to you. But yet an emotional up here today. And he said, I'm going to allow this. He gave me this verse for 2022. This is what he showed me. Habakkuk 1.5, look among the nations. Because you know this ministry is to the nations. We have already been invited to one of the nations that we all know and love to come as soon as possible to speak in leadership conferences with some of the leading political and, and also ministerial leaders of, of the nation. They're asking me to come as one of the speakers. Now we have to, God is preparing we may not understand all the ways of the Lord. I certainly don't understand everything that God is doing, but I know He has a purpose. I know He has a plan. Our job is to follow. Our job is, to, you know, the, the, an ambassador speaks for the, for the president. He speaks for the nation. He represents the nation to another nation. Well, we represent heaven to this earth here today Amen. as His ambassadors, his, spoke, his spokesperson. The oracle, he said that we are the oracles of God. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the responsibility of that? Mm -hmm. Being an oracle of God, a representative. We have to be on our toes. We have to be spiritually alert. We have to recognize what's going on around about us and, and, and follow and trust because God will give a very positive outcome. So here it is, Habakkuk 1.5. Look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded. For I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. I'm going to read it again because uh, I want to see the impact and the, yes. the power that is in that message. Uh, and so he said, look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it would be told you. Now, I, I praise the Lord for that. God's going to do a great work. You say, well, Pastor Mike, he's been doing a pretty great work now, hasn't he? Yes, but the best is yet to come. Yes, amen. Mm. Don't forget that the latter house shall be greater than the former. Oh. Amen. I'm getting excited here today. <laughs> but God's showing us in the revelation. He's Come telling on, us that Thank we're going to go to the nations. He's telling us we're going to enlarge and expand. He's telling us he's going to make divine provision. That there'll be, there'll be no lack anywhere at that, that even that God will bless. Even in Solomon's time, he, God made him so successful that the Bible declares that the, even the foreign kings that came to visit, visit him said the half hasn't even been told. Oh. Oh, what God has provided for him and the half hasn't even been told. But God's going to provide for his people in this, around the world here today. Yes, amen. We're not just talking about our ministry. We're talking about all the ministries that have been amen. faithful. All those years, all those years of faithfulness. Commitment. Thank you, Lord. Commitment. That's right. Commitment. Thank you. That's so great Lord. here today. We just oh, praise the Lord. Lord. And uh, we even, as a child, I knew some missionaries in China. They gave one day they, they had to pray and ask God for something to eat because they gave all their food away and didn't leave any for themselves. Mm. Those are the kind of commitments that people have made through the years mm. for the gospel of Jesus Christ. To go, to go forth. And uh, I understand there's going to be a movie now made about this couple that ministered in China. Anyway, so God's going to do a work, a great work that the, that the world has not even seen. And we're going to be utterly astounded in this great work, what he's going to do. I'm excited. I feel uh, a surge in my spirit. Uh, God has kept us in divine health. He's done miracles for our, our, our people, our, our staff at Promise Christian University our ministers here at World for Jesus. 
He, if they were sick, he's been healing them. They've had miraculous things happen to them and getting ready. Well, why is he doing all that? Because we're getting ready to go again. To reach, said we're going to reach the nations with the gospel of the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. That's it. We're not bound Thank by Lord. circumstances. <laughs> we're not going to be bound by conditions. We're not going to be bound by the airport. Come on, oh, God will get us there. <laughs> One way or the other, we'll get there. Amen. Yeah, so true, yeah. I praise the Lord. We're not, we're not done yet. You're right. Oh, Amen. I will work and work in your days which you would not believe. You'll be utterly astounded. Utterly astounded what God is going to do. This is the message for the church. Habakkuk said in chapter 2 4, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. God has given his people this vision. And so, I, what does the vision include? It includes souls, harvest, leadership. Amen. All these things and, uh, and even uh, building projects and things like that. It's all inclusive in the expansion of the kingdom. Amen. This expansion of the kingdom. When God made this world, he made the entire world, not just part of it. So we're going to be taken care of very beautifully here today. All of us. I know we believe that and I'm very excited to tell you that today. And so he said, write the vision, make it plain on the tablets that it may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But he said, uh, uh, at the end we'll speak and it will, it will not lie. And, and then in, in verse 3, he says, though it tarries, wait for us, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. See, God has a timing for everything to happen. These breakthroughs, these miracles, this divine intervention, it's on its way. Amen. It's on its way. We've seen God's glory in the past, but we're not living in past glory. We're looking for what he's going to do in the future. Amen. Hallelujah. He even told the children of Israel to move on from the mountain, didn't he? He said, you've been at this mountain too long. It's time to move on now. <laughs> time to move on to the next level. We've been told that God's going to bring this ministry to another level, a higher level. And I'm thankful, and I believe he's going to bring the body of Christ to a higher level. Amen. All yes. over the world here today. And I praise and thank the Lord for the opportunities that God is making available to his people. Harvest of souls, leadership, building projects. And uh, thank you. And he said, what tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Stay true to the mission God has given you. And keep close. It says in 1 Timothy 4.16, you can read it later, keep a close watch over all you do and think mm. and stay true to the task. We have to keep a, a watch. We're like the watchman on the wall. The Bible talks about that, doesn't it? Yes. We're, all, we're like the watchman. There was a, uh, I saw a, a, like a cartoon uh, of, uh, regarding people that let down the standard. It showed uh, a castle like in England during the nights of, of the round table time when they wore the, the iron uh, the suits and they fought with swords and, 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 and all that stuff, lances and all that. It shows this British uh, like a castle in England during the, the feudal days when they were, the men were all in, in armor. armor. And, uh, and, so they, and, and so this watchman on the wall, he's, he's standing watch, but he's asleep. And when he wakes up, the enemy army is all there, uh, thousands of them, in front of the castle, looking up at him like this. He was asleep. Mm. He couldn't get the alarm. Mm. That's, that's, that's so scary when you see that. Yeah. They were ready, they're ready to start mounting the castle like they did. With, you know, with the, they had, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, ladders and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And that's what they did. So it, it was kind of scary when you, when you see that. So anyway... We know that God is going to do these kind of great things in the, in the end time. And he also mentions here in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know I love this. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Yes. There are plans for good and not dis disaster to give you a future and hope. And I want you to know that I got a present the other night from Pastor Renee. And, and we, we had this scripture before. And guess what it says on the wallet he gave me. I know the plans I have for you, <laughs> declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Amen. 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 To me, on Friday night, I had already looked at this prior to that, prior to Friday, Friday night. I'm thankful for that today. Wow.
Then in 1 Kings, let your heart therefore be holy, true to the Lord our God, walking in his statutes, keeping his commandment at, at this day. Oh, so God is enlarging us here. He's equipping us for the task. And one of the other scriptures that I, I want you to know, that one of the things that he's having us do in this enlargement, God showed me the enlargement of the ministry. Of course, as, as head of the, of the ministry, I have to see that. God shows me that. And, the, and that this generation, it will be reached. And our job has been and has been through the years equipping, empowering, encouraging, expanding, and enlarging our influence for Jesus Christ. Mm. And it says, I believe that in the last days, this will be the story of the gospel of Christ to the nations for all the ministries. Those that have been faithful, those that have been committed, I believe that goes for every one of you. Every one of you Amen. here today, those that are watching by way Thank of you. television, that our job is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And that's what we're endeavoring to do at Promise Christian University. And we're very honored to have done that. Then also we're going to begin to have be a, a more of a, a enlarging of influence for the Lord Jesus Christ. I was quite surprised that I got this invitation the other day to reach not only Christian leaders but political leaders who will be at the conference and they're asking me to be one of the speakers. I'm really honored and thrilled. I didn't expect that to come. But you know, we have to be ready when God calls us. You, we have to be ready for what God Thank wants you. us to do. So I see in the future the influence here too uh, with this ministry as well as the other ministries. And then uh, the Bible says in, in one of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 54, 2, enlarge the place of your tent. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. Or you will expand to the right hand and to the left. There will be a birth of new things, new tents, and new enterprises. Amen? Yes. Oh, amen. amen. I'm going to read that again. Amen. There will be a birth of new things, new tents, and new enterprises. It's all inclusive. Oh. Everything's included here today. Isaiah 43, 18, 19. Three of us on Friday night had the same That's scripture. Four, four of us had the same scripture. We didn't even know that we had the same scripture. <laughs> Isaiah 43, 18. Thank you. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. <laughs> we're covered. We're covered here today. God is preparing the way for his church to arise. I want you to know that on December 1st, 2021, the body of Christ worldwide spent 40 hours in prayer, specifically repentance for our sins. I, when we, our ministry was one that participated in this international online prayer service that reached not only the, the entire USA, this was just back in December, but it reached Canada, Asia, the Middle East, Europe, Africa, and South America were all reached in this wonderful prayer meeting. They asked, us, they asked us if we would be one who would participate, our ministry would participate, and I'm glad that we did. And God began to answer prayers. It was a spiritual breakthrough to see people of every nation crying out to God and asking for forgiveness for the sins of the nation. God hears and answers prayers of his people. Mm. Habakkuk's name means, and I'm almost done here, it means embrace and to cling. Habakkuk chose to cling firmly to God, regardless of the situations around him or what was happening to his nation. He stayed true to his task. God blessed him with his presence. <laughs> oh, amen. Yes. As long as we can sense that God is with us, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter the situation, the condition, or the circumstance. Even if we don't fully understand what the outcome will be, God understands what the outcome yes. will be. Amen. And as long as we feel that peace that passes all understanding, it will keep our hearts and our minds through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's give him praise for that. Yes. Let's give him praise for that. Yes. And here was his prayer. He, it says in, he, in Habakkuk 2, uh, chapter 3, verse 2. We're almost done. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. So I believe that God will do that. 
There is no God like our God. Now this is what I see for our ministry here. This is the revelation God gave me, not only for the body of Christ, for the, for the nations, but personally here. The next five years, this is what the Lord showed me. World for Jesus expanding its influence around the world. Promise Christian University equipping, educating, and international evangelism. Promise Channel impacting the world through our television programs. The PGI movement, the Promise Government Institute, that we in, at Promise are the ones that began that ministry, the, the governmental uh, meetings, the Pro uh, Promise Government Institute. Movement is making a larger connections between the church, business, academia, and government with one goal, influencing leaders for nation transformation. Amen. We're seeing that begin to happen. Yeah. God's going to use this ministry and that area. And once you know that our dear friend in Malaysia, Dexter Lowe, his book was on national transformation. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and God's telling us we're going to be used that way too. Isaiah 40, I'm almost done. What, is the, what are we to do then, Pastor Mike? Now that we're learning all these things that God expects of us and what we can expect from the Lord, what does he want us to do? Isaiah 40, 3 and 5. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight. And the rough places uh, smooth. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh will see it together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I want to read one last scripture. And we're going to close. Isaiah chapter 60. I think Sister Lily, you're going to be interested in this one. In Isaiah 60, because I look from a different translation. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise over you, and, and, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. Now, Sister Lily's working on some tremendous projects. We have to pray. This is what it says. Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Look and see, for everyone is coming home. Your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughter shall be carried home. Your eyes will shine and your heart will thrill with joy for merchants from around the world will come to you and they will bring you the wealth of many lands. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God will do amazing things for his people in 2022. And we will be astounded, as it says in Habakkuk 1.5, I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe, even if I told you. Mm. Shall we pray? Mm. Father, we're thankful today for World for Jesus International, Promise Christian University, the Promise Governance Institute, the Promise Television Channel. We're thankful, Lord, for the influence around the world, but we know that you have greater things in store. We pray, Lord, for the people across this land and the other nations, Lord. For revival. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, as a nation, as people that maybe have let down the standards. But Lord, we pray today that you will just help us to overcome, to understand your ways as Habakkuk finally understood. Did you did did you take charge of the situation? Oh yes, you did. Yes, they had they learned a very hard lesson where the enemy armies came to overwhelm them until they repented. And Lord, we are thankful here today that we are repenting as a nation and as a people. Bless us now. Give us, Lord, your continued blessing and shower our people with divine health, strength, provision, prosperity, blessing, healing, anointing, double portion of anointing as they minister. May they minister for you and uh, bless them. We bless our ministers, not only here, but around other countries that are joined World for Jesus and want even open a church called it World for Jesus. Father, we're thankful. Bless them, be with them, anoint them as well as us here today. Where this message is for all people, all the body of Christ. We're thankful and we praise you for all these things. In the name of Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Glory Happy God. New Year. I want to thank Glory you for God. watching today. God bless you real good.